Welcome. I am Mr. Clock, the creator of the Arma 3 Object Builder add-on for Blender. In this video, I would like to go over the process of importing a P3D model back into Blender. In the P3D setup and export video, I demonstrated the process through the creation of this very simple footlocker model and then subsequent export to P3D format. And now I will use the same file to demonstrate the P3D import process back into Blender. So as you can see, in that video I created five uh, separate LODs, I'm sorry, six separate LODs for the P3D, a simple uh, third-person visual resolution, a simple shadow volume, ge collision geometry, memory points for animations, roadway LOD, and also fire geometry. So this is what I will hope to get back into Blender for further editing if needed. So if we open Blender and go to the file menu, import and then Arma 3 model and we navigate to our file which is in tutorial, create and footlocker in my case. We can simply click on import and this will import every load of the model as a separate object in Blender, a separate mesh object in Blender. As you can see, the uh, the mesh objects themselves are grouped into separate collections as well. Uh, these, this can be influenced by a f few settings in the import menu, which we will go over shortly. But uh, very simply put, there will be a top level collection for the P3D itself, which is named after the file, the original file. Then there will be a few groups for certain lot types. You can see that there will be a visuals collection which will have all the resolutions, has shadows, geometries for the geometry types, point clouds and miscellaneous for everything else. But as you can see, the process pretty much uh, was successful. Uh, we got the six lot objects, if we can, as you can see. Um, we can actually just check them that they are actually what we want. So this is the visual resolution. Uh, we also got the proper geometry as we created earlier, roadway and so on. So this is the very basic bare bones process of importing a P3D. But if you watched closely uh, during the import dialog, there were quite a few options to this process. So I will go back to the model again and let's go over some of the options we can see on the right side here. The so first option is called first slot only. Um, this is very useful if you just want to look at the visual load of the of the model. Um, so what this will do is it will literally take the first load data block in the P3D and it only process that thing. Uh, it will not not create objects for the rest. Uh, typically, this this object, the data object in the P3D, will be the first load, first resolution load. Uh, if your P3D doesn't have a first resolution, then it will probably be something else. Second option is the validate meshes. This will attempt to find some topological errors in meshes, so for example like faces that are on the two faces on the same points, which is a topological error. Um, it will import f just fine if you have some errors like that, but you might want to enable this in some cases. Then there will be this collections group. This is what sets up how the collections are created, so currently you can uh, enable to enclose it in a collection. So this will this will create the top level collection for the file name itself. So it's nicely organized. If you import multiple P3Ds, you can tell them apart by top level collection. And then currently, you can group by either none. So this will not create any uh, subcategories, sub collections. So it it will not create uh, visuals, shadows, geometries collection inside the file collection. Um, or you can set it to type, so type is what we can uh, we can do currently. There might be more options in the future, who knows. 
Uh, if you disable the top level collection, there will be no file collection. If you set this to none, this will no uh, sub collections will be created. If we disable both of them, practically the entire imported PGD will be dumped into the scene collection, which may or may not be desirable in some cases. The next section is the data section. This is uh, for processing of the actual like uh, ex uh, additional data blocks in a P3D. So the absolute path option will make the import process try to recreate absolute paths. Style paths in, in add-ons are technically relative to the root of the game's own internal file system. Typically, for modding purposes, we have a project drive and our file paths start from there. So what this option will do is it will try to take the relative paths in the P3D file and try to recreate the full, uh, full absolute file path by appending it to the project root, which is set in the add-on preferences. If it succeeds and it finds an actual existing file there in your system, then it will set that as a path. If it doesn't, then it will just simply import the relative path as is. So you can, you, so you will not lose any um, any path data in this way. And then the second option is the additional data, which is enabled by default. If we disable this, we can see that everything else gets grayed out. So essentially, what this means is it enables to import or process all of these additional blocks. So. Custom normals are mainly important for high fidelity models with normal maps. Um, if you leave this off, um, it will not import any of the um, any of the custom vertex normals. Um, flags are also related to normals. Uh, these are point flags, or vertex flags, and face flags. Uh, these are usually not needed to import to be imported, but the option is here if you need it. Name properties are pretty self-explanatory. Vertex mass selections, UV sets, and materials are also. Um, if the materials are not not enabled, um, the textures and RVMAT file pets are not set up and not created. And then there is another last option here, which is the sections. So um, there is a there is a weird occurrence with uh, some P3D files where sections are in a sort of fragmented state where materials are alternating in the file. And so by default, the add-on will try to preserve this, but this might end up creating more materials than there are actually supposed to be on the model. So there is an option to merge them together, which may or may not get the correct results you expect. So just be aware that if you want to get the file as is, then keep it preserved and not merge. And then finally, there are post-process options to the import process. The first one is the translate selections. This is basically the mirror equivalent of the translate selections in the export process. Um, this looks at the uh, selection names and if it matches a, uh, a predefined check name uh, in the internal table of the add-on, it will attempt to translate it to, to the English equivalent. Second option is the cleanup selections. What this will do is it will look through named selections in your models and if a selection is technically defined but doesn't have any vertices or faces at, uh, assigned to them, then the selection will be cleaned up and it'll, it will not be recreated in Blender. And then this final section here is the proxy action. Now this footlocker model in particular doesn't have a proxy any proxies in it, but if this was, for example, a character model or a weapon model, we would probably have a good number of proxies here. So proxies are in by default stored as triangles in P3D uh, models, which is still a mesh model, mesh data. So by default, um, when the file is read, it, the, the triangle is still a triangle. It's not interpreted as a proxy properly. So the first option to do nothing is to leave the triangles as they are. The triangles will be in the mesh model. This is just raw mesh data, but this will also lose the proxy information. Second option, which is the default, is to separate the proxy triangles from the, from the load object models. This will take the, the triangles and set them up as separate separate objects 
parent it to the load object and apply the proper transformations to them so that the proxy coordinate systems are actually visible and, and usable for transforms in Blender. And then the last option is really just a utility feature to separate the proxies and then purge them away in case you don't really need the feature. So if you just want to look at the um, the first visual load of, for example, a character, then what you would do is just first load only and then purge the proxies. So this way you will only get one load and you won't have the triangles if you don't need them. So for example, in this case, we don't have any proxies, but if we just first load object and go on the footlocker, we will see that we only get just one load. We don't get the other five loads we created earlier. And just for the uh, demonstration purposes, I will quickly go ahead and show the proxy behavior on a sample model from the Armatory samples. So if you look at the character, and the character example, if you look at first slot only, for example, and purge the proxies, import P3D, you can see that we we don't have any, any of the proxies imported here. Normally, you would have all the triangles as separate objects. Now, a final note about the import options is that some, uh, some operations are not available so for example the proxy action post process is not available if the additional data is not enabled for the import because this relies on the selections being enabled so even if the additional data is enabled itself but selections are disabled the proxies and other selection operations still cannot be handled because proxies are are, are defined as selections in p3d files so just be aware of that. Uh, but if everything goes by the default settings and we import a character, for example, we will get all the proper loads of a character model and then also the proper uh, proxy triangles. So for example, for the first load, we can see that we have the main mesh and then the proxy triangles are separated out as separate mesh objects with proper local coordinate systems so they can be easily transformed and visualized. This is basically all I wanted to show about the P3D import process. I hope you find it useful and uh, thank you.